Hello, welcome to this uh, CAD Image PLM webinar where we're looking at the uh, user interface uh, in Solid Edge ST7. My name is Andy Rigby, I'll be taking you through the session. <clears throat> the topics for the session uh, are to look at some of the new tools they've brought in, some of the enhancements and changes as a consequence to some of the user settings and some of the new options there as well. Uh, we'll run through uh, some PowerPoints just to highlight some of the key areas uh, of change and improvement uh, over this uh, this new version, due for general release uh, soon. Let's start up uh, with the startup screen. Start off with the startup screen. So, if we um, <clears throat> push across into uh, ST7, startup screen looks slightly different. I've got uh, ST7 and ST6 running as well, so we can do a bit of a comparison as we run through. So, there's the current ST6 screen. And uh, here's what it looks like in ST7. So they've pushed uh, one or two things around, changed some of the colours. It, it looks a little bit nicer than it did before. They have made some um, some nice changes here. So things like your recent documents list, you can right click on. You can turn the thumbnails off if you want a more comprehensive list uh, of the documents that you've recently opened. You can also, which I really like, remove items from this list as well. If you just open the file because you wanted to check a drawing or you wanted to check a model file. <clears throat> as a one-off. You don't want it to appear in your recent documents list, you can simply remove it. It's also easier now to modify, modify the uh, the create list as well, so this is the standard out-of-the-box uh, list of ISO, uh, ISO metric templates. If we click on the edit list button, there's a whole raft of templates. The majority of these you will probably not need, but that list does reflect what's installed with Solid Edge now which is slightly different to what it was in ST6. So if we go into the template folder, there's a list of all of the templates that are delivered. There are significantly more than there were before. If I don't like that list or I want to change this particular list, what I might do here is just go ahead and we'll create a, a new list. We'll base that on that, uh, that isometric list uh, that we've got already. So. The it's added in a, a custom template list and actually weldments not interested in so we'll remove it never use those the, the draft file I'm going to remove that as well I might just rename some of these or just simplify it a little bit as well so we'll uh, we'll just change some of these so they appear a little bit more simply in the interface so in the part file we'll remove the isometric and apply that and then we'll also perhaps go in and add in our standard drawing template as well so I've got that already in the template location. So if we go back to uh, Windows for a second into template, there is my standard drawing template. I've copied in to that folder location. So we'll add it and we'll call that drawing. Add, done. There's an updated list of all the bits and pieces that we're going to use. Uh, the links is still, uh, still available. Don't know if you've looked at that before, but uh, again, we'll have a quick look at it. So if we edit links, I can add in uh, my own, it might be a good uh, good idea perhaps just to go in and throw something in here, so CAD image PLM blog, let's have a quick look, see what we can find there, so there's the, there's the company blog which has got um, useful tips and techniques etc on it, so we might just copy that out of the address bar, we'll paste it in and we'll just chuck in a name for that as well, SE blog, add it. Okay. You've also got some quick links at the bottom as well. So you've got news, which will take you to uh, the the Facebook page. Support will take you straight to GTAC. So I could have added it added it to links, but I don't need to. And then the community will take you to the Siemens uh, blog for Solid Edge as well. Standard access to tutorials, help files, etc. On the right hand side, but just a little bit nicer to look at as well, the, the standard interface. If we have a look at um, what they've done with the open and, and save dialog boxes, they have tweaked the settings here <coughs> to uh, to reflect what's available in Microsoft Office. So this looks and feels a lot more like uh, the Office dialog boxes as well. So standard template or, or file type filters are available still. Same list there, they've just moved some of these options around. So if we open up one of these files, same options available, it's just that they've changed the layout slightly. So we'll open up that file, one of the standard uh, template uh, 
training files for Solid Edge, and if we have a look at the save dialog of blocks as well, and again, change slightly. Um, some of the filters drop down lists for changing the way the information is being displayed, but it says pretty much uh, the, the Microsoft Office save dialog box, which is now available. Let's go ahead and create a new part file. They've also swapped the list here, so uh, assembly of active model and drawing of active model, they've pushed to the top of the list rather than being at the bottom. There's my standard template. A couple of things that they have done. The prompt bar I've moved, so I push that to the top because it helps uh, certainly with new users. They have added a bit of text to it, so when you're starting a file from scratch, the prompt bar contains information in it. In SC6, if we go ahead and uh, fire up a standard part file, the prompt bar doesn't contain anything at all. So they have done some good, uh, some good things helping out new users. Uh, on top of that, they have also given you access to the material table in the Pathfinder uh, by default. Again, in ST6, if I'm going to go and access the material table, the easiest way of doing that, right-click on the file name for parts and sheet metal files and go straight to the material table from there. But you don't have to do that in ST7. It's listed already. And if there is a material assigned, it'll tell you what it is in Pathfinder without having to go and open the material table. Uh, the background, this is the standard background color uh, for templates. Uh, I may or may not like it, but you do have access uh, to the overrides of the background in a, in a slightly more logical way. So I can right click in the background anywhere. They've added it to the shortcut, this background and override option, and they've changed this dialog box slightly as well. So I can change that to solid if I want to, which I tend to prefer. <clears throat> Maybe not white. Um, the other option for that, so how would I have found that in the past? If I go to path, uh, the command finder, maybe throw in uh, background in there, so it's going to find it. Okay, it's going to find yeah, where the background settings are. So I could have done this in ST6, but I still need to do a little bit more clicking. I had to type in the value, I had to type it into command finder. Hasn't taken me straight to the tab. Um, so it's a little bit more long-winded. So it's just that ease of use, just making commands easier to find and easier to utilize. Uh, there are in the command ribbon, we have um, added in some extra uh, help for new, again, for more targeted at new users. I'll go into solid edge options just for a second because I have turned them off for the time being. Let's turn them back on again for a second. So things like the box command and things like if we go to the surfacing tools, the blue surf tools. So they've added in some videos, um, not to all of the commands, but um, some of the main ones, just to give you an idea of what, uh, how, how to operate, uh, how to operate that command. So it's just some additional help. And clearly through solid edge options, I can go through and filter down reduce the amount of information that's being displayed. So if I turn off the video clips, you do need flash install to show those video clips. If I tone it down and, ch and toggle that option off, then the enhanced tool tips will just show me an image. And if I turn that off, then we're back to the standard S pre ST7 help file, so blue surf. The only real difference now is that all of these little tool tips that you can see, it says press F1 for help in ST6. It doesn't do that. It just tells you what the command does. In, uh, in the sketching tools, they have added in the relationship colors to a slightly more logical position. It's still in the inspect tools. This is only really, um, you only need to turn it on once, but finding it in the past has been a little bit, uh, it's been a little bit hidden away on one of the tabs. So relationship colors is still there, but you can access it from the sketching tools um, and you can turn it on there instead. So that's the startup screen looked at. Dialog boxes really just focusing on the open and the save dialog boxes are the ones that we've looked at there. There are some other changes to some of the other dialog boxes in Solid Edge, but we'll focus on those when we run through some of the uh, some of the other webinars coming up uh, in the not too distant future. Ribbon bar changes. You may have noticed already that there's a there's, they've added in a couple of commands. Uh, again, we'll cover the, some of those off. In, uh, in in some of the future webinars, the actual the actual tools themselves. Solid Edge options. Let's pop back into uh, into Solid Edge and have a look at some of the uh, the changes they've made there. Into options. One of the key changes, I guess, is that they've added in this units category. So um, so Solid Edge now controls file units 
from solid edge options so it's not um, it's not file dependent anymore it's a, it's a general setting in solid edge so in the past in ST6 you'd have accessed file properties from the application button they've also added in this file units option but in ST6 you'd go to file properties into the units tab and you'd access units and accuracy there they've removed those now from properties so I say they're not file dependent they are a standard general setting in solid edge and they put them into this dialog box or added them to the, uh, the solid edge options page if we go ahead and have a look at perhaps we'll have a look at the view tool you've got a couple of useful little toggles here so reverse zoom direction if you're used to using the scroll wheel on your mouse and solid edge does the opposite to what you're used to you can swap that over um, I have certainly know of a few customers who have requested that as an option in the past. Um, if we go back to general, there are some useful little global settings here as well. So if you're using synchronous modeling, you've got some global settings for how Solid Edge deals with and uses sketches and sketch information for when you're creating solid models. So there's some useful toggles there that will globally define what happens with sketch geometry rather than having to do it again on a file by file basis. So we've had a look at um, the background settings. What is also useful, and I will have a look at, uh, we'll go back to PowerPoint for a second for this, some of the options available in the model window is uh, there is a quick view cube that's been introduced in ST7 so you can use this to change the orientation of the model uh, again there's a there's an extensive list of what all of the elements on that cube do when you move your mouse over the top of it I have gone back to PowerPoint for a second because in my copy of ST7 bearing in mind it's running on a virtual machine ordinarily I'd expect that cube to appear in the bottom right hand corner and I say it doesn't on mine but I think that's a virtual machine setting as much as anything else so that's why we're looking at it in the PowerPoint so when your mouse isn't over the top of it this is how it's going to display you can control exactly where it is and exactly how big it is and what happens when you move your mouse over the top of it so if I move my mouse over these elements then they just become a little bit bolder and you can effectively think of this quick view cube as a, a dynamic um, what's the word I'm looking what's the tool I'm looking for the dynamic common views command so common views is, is undoubtedly a useful tool but the fact that you had to click on it to start it and then you've got to click on these elements just and it wasn't always on screen or you'd have to close the dialog box didn't make it quite as useful as it might have been next to the common views tool down at the bottom here and there's several different ways you can access these settings but um, I can click and fire up the settings box and change its location and define what happens with it so let's go back into PowerPoint again and just have a look see what sorts of things you can do with it so selecting different elements on that cube will reorientate the model is the bottom line so you can snap to faces you can rotate about edges rotate about points and define and get, get solid edge to snap the orientation to um, to standard isometric views as well. You can rotate around 90 degrees so not only can you select elements on the cube you can use the home button to go back to the standard um, solid edge default 3D orientation and you can use these rotate buttons as well to spin the model around. So here you can see the note in there just indicates that it, um, it pushes the model into standard orientations just like the um, the common views tool does at the moment in ST6 so a really nice graphical user interface thing there are some CAD products on the market that have something similar so um, so they've done a good job there in implementing that and just making it a bit easier to rotate models around if we popped over to let's go back to one of the existing models that I opened a second ago if I edit into a model from an assembly they've added in close and return into the top left hand corner of the model window rather than having to push the mouse across to the to the ribbon bar across the top and pick close and return there so if you're if you're using ordered modeling for example then um, it's a it's very similar to the way that close sketch works as well takes us back to the assembly 
let's go ahead and we'll, we'll pop back to uh, that part file that we started a minute ago. The next thing I wanted to have a look at, let's just let's just push across into um, into PowerPoint for a second. Again, just a few more options, uh, a few more settings available through the Quick View tool. So we've had a look at the model window. Let's have a look at some of the changes they've made to the sketching tools or, or enhancements they've made to the sketching tools as much as anything. You do have access to uh, the sketch view command all the time now. You don't have to wait until you've locked onto a plane. So if the model's in a whatever orientation the model is in, or yeah, the model is in, then you can grab the sketch view tool or use the shortcut there and it will automatically snap the 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 model orientation to looking down on the closest available plane. You don't have to lock to a plane to do that. Talking of locking onto planes, again, slight change in the way that Solid Edge displays this in SC7. Yeah, you've got the lock symbol, but you've also got F3 has been added below it. If I go into SC6, move my mouse over the um, the base coordinate systems, you just get a lock symbol. So much, yeah, just start a little bit nicer in ST7, click on the lock symbol or press F3 and the little handle that appears in the top right hand corner of the model window, again changed slightly, has the little F3 key indicator there. We'll use the sketch view shortcut just to take us into looking down on this plane. We'll grab the line command. Uh, one of the key differences, I guess, between ST7 and ST6 is what's displaying on the mouse right now is that as soon as I start drawing elements, you're automatically given these dynamic edit controls, dimensions. So if I type in a value, you can see they've grayed out the boxes in the command bar. I don't need to use those anymore. I can just use the controls and the elements that are on what it is that I'm drawing and, and define that. And it's just a little bit more logical and there's less mouse travel involved as well. So um, if I use the shift key, there are some useful changes here. I'm holding the shift key down as I move the mouse around the line is being moved incrementally around by 15 degrees at a time rather than just dynamically dragging around. If you're using things like circle, center point again you get handles, I've got the ability to define that circle by diameter or by radius. I don't have um, auto dimensions on we pick rectangle by center and again you've got several input boxes the dynamic controls directly on the sketch geometry just making it that little bit easier to define uh, the sketch geometry you can also again the shift key works nicely here as well so as I move, hold the shift key down and move the mouse in and out it's creating a box rather than a than a rectangle so if I release the shift key I'm then left with a rectangle let's just do another one over here <clears throat> if we just add in a spline as well, let's just have a look at some changes they made briefly to uh, to the smart dimension tools. So we can access that from the radial menu. Works the same on things like circles, rectangles, and lines, but slight change here to if you are doing maybe some surfacing, then <clears throat> if you place a smart dimension on a spline, it'll give you the length of the spline, and that is a significant improvement because in SD6 it gives you the radius of the spline at that particular point wherever your dimension is so the ability to create a a length so I can always go back and get that if I want the radius value but the, the ability to display a length just makes surfacing if I want to create a number of cross sections for, for some surface modeling and I want to make sure the spline is the same length on all of those cross sections that is easy to achieve now in ST6 uh, something else, again, you may have noticed is if I'm selecting um, bits of sketch geometry is the little handles they put on. That was an improvement in ST6, but if I move the mouse over the top of an existing line or circle or spline, you can see it's pulling up where the little handles are. So it's just that little bit easier to locate different key points on whatever it is that my mouse is over the top of. I can still use keyboard shortcuts to snap to midpoints and endpoints, etc. But it's just those little circular handles pop up that make that a little bit easier to achieve. Something else, again, that's that's um, I've heard from customers before uh, as an improvement to Solid Edge is the ability to create things like relationships all at the same time. So if I wanted to make sure that this line and this line and the size of this box were all the same length, I can do that now as it says in the prompt bar. If I hold the shift key down, I can pick all the target elements. 
as soon as I release the shift key, I can go ahead and pick the, the controlling element or the seed element or the source element, whatever you want to call it. And it creates all of those equal relationships in one. Instead of in ST6, I'd have to click, 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 click. There's, there's a significant time saving now in, in the ability to create multiple relationships all at the same time. So I can control the length of all of those lines <coughs> because they've all got an equal relationship on them. You'll also find that things like Quick Pick have improved slightly, so you just get a little bit, again, it's all about user feedback here. Some of these symbols have changed slightly and they just make it easier to recognize what it is that Quick Pick is displaying in a list. Uh, last little thing to have a look at in sketching is the construction tool. You can fence select now rather than, again, having to click, 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 multiple clicks to, to toggle between an element being a construction uh, geometry and, uh, and an actual uh, geometry for, for use uh, as a feature. Uh, some of the changes they've made to the command bar. So the command bar is the element that pops up when you select a particular tool. Let's go to the surfacing tools that would help us illustrate what's going on here. So if I start a command, for example, blue surf is, is one of the areas and some of the surfacing tools in general uh, are some of the, some of the some of the consistency they've tried to add in one of the one of the observations of the, of of, um, of what solid uh, what Siemens did with solid edge and the surfacing tools in ST6 was that some of these bars didn't contain all of the tools that they needed to they appeared in different in different areas of the interface so blue surf for example they've added in a couple of these buttons the same with uh, so that in bounded surface those options should also be available so they've added them to the command bar what they've also done is these tangency handles, which again is something they, they, they added in into SD6 to, to dramatically improve uh, some of the surfacing capability. You can multi-select some of those handles and change them all in one go rather than reducing, rather than forcing the user to do a lot of clicking. So we've seen some examples where, where um, they've improved that already. That creating that equal relationship on the sketch geometry is a, is a good example. They have, uh, they've done something similar with the, uh, the tangency handles if you're doing some surface modeling. Um, back to PowerPoint for a second. Uh, some new commands. I think we'll stick with PowerPoint for this one for a second. So there is a, they've added in a, a, a print to, uh, to 3D, or at least print to Microsoft 3D Builder as an option. Um, to the drop down list um, in, um, uh, in the application menu, it is only available in Windows 8.1. My virtual machine is Windows 7, so it doesn't appear, which is why I've dropped it into the, power, into the PowerPoint. So um, that will be an option that you can select if you're running Windows 8.1 from any of the 3D uh, modeling environments. If you haven't got that, <clears throat> Uh, application loaded then if you click on it is a uh, you click on that option to print then it'll give you a dialog box where you can select the link and uh, you can go ahead and uh, and download that and install it um, you can also still just use uh, STL if that's what you're used to and you've been using in the past and the device that you're using doesn't require or need the uh, the 3d the Microsoft uh, application one last uh, thing to have a look at with regards to um, new command not so much a new command but it, it for anybody who hasn't uh, who has been using solid edge since synchronous technology came out and not beforehand then um, one of the tools that uh, that the st7 supports for sheet metal files let's just change the background again is uh, is a sensor called um, is the is the, is the sheet metal sensor it wasn't supported uh, in 64 bit so um, what this does, um, so it's, it's really just kind of reactivating. It's not so much a new command, but it, it command it might be new to you. So we'll have a quick look at it anyway. So what does that sheet metal sensor do? Now that they've turned it back on again, if you're not quite sure what it does do, let's fire in a, a um, we'll just make a, a part and cut a hole in it. So there's my sheet metal component. And what this sensor can do is, um, if I check the box, interior, exterior edges, there are some a drop-down list of things that you can 
specific solid edge features that you can check on here what i really want this sensor to do is just to make sure this cutout doesn't get too close to the edge of the part and compromise the the strength integrity of it so we'll call this uh, clearance and the threshold value is 10 mil perhaps which is fine that works okay at the moment so that's uh, that's all good but if i pick up the edge of the model and then i start moving this eventually you can see that there's a little Hopefully you can see in the top right hand corner of the model window, there's a little exclamation mark where that distance is now less than 10 mil. Okay. So if we click on that, it tells me, ah, oh, the sensor has been violated. What does the, what does this, if you're not familiar with it, then it pops up with the sensor tab and okay, I can now tell you, all right, there, there's the actual value and this is why uh, Solid Edge doesn't like it. So I say not so much a new function, but a reactivation of a, of a slightly older one. And actually, just thinking about how this works is if that's something that's really useful for you. And it, and it does work with things like holes as well. Here, it's just checking to make sure that any interior edges uh, don't get too close to any exterior edges. So if I if I throw this hole in and start moving it towards the edge of the model, you can see that the sensor's uh, flagged up again. If that was something that I would I thought was really useful, then I could I could actually kind of combine it into my standard template. So actually, I don't need any geometry in this model file at all. We can delete everything. We can ignore that uh, error message because uh, it's just telling me that it can't delete the base uh, coordinate system, which is fine. But um, I could now potentially just save this as my uh, into my template folder as my sheet metal template, and that sensor is active. Admittedly, it's it's flagged up because there's nothing in the in the model file, but um, so if I go ahead and create some geometry just like I did a second ago, then um, and some of the elements are too close to the edge of the model, um, then that sensor is going to flag up uh, and display. So, so the, the key difference here is um, that's how it actually works, and this, that's it working in, um, in ST7. If we go ahead and I need to create a new sheet metal part, then uh, if you go to the sensors tab, then it's just, it's just grayed out. It's, um, even if there were some elements, you can actually turn some of these sensors on. But uh, it's just not an option that you can you can use in ST6 and prior to that. And that's uh, that's a look through um, some of the user interface changes. It's not all of them because some of them are specific to um, to some of the part sheet metal assembly tools. So we'll have a look at some of those when, say, we run in some of these uh, future some of these uh, future webinars but hopefully that's given you a, a reasonably thorough look at what uh, Solid Edge is delivering in ST7. Loving some of the sketching tools, those little handles that Solid Edge pops up um, really help a lot. <clears throat> the material table stuff uh, is very good and I like the, the quick view to uh, the, the quick view uh, cube as well. So some new tools, some enhancements, some really good enhancements to existing tools. I hope you found this session um, of use and look forward to seeing you in a future session. Thank you.